Hi, this is the Adamson, and today I am going to do a fun little painting, super, super easy, of a shell. And it's going to be up close, so you're going to see part of the shell. And obviously the first thing, I'm going to go in and sketch it. So I'm just doing a simple spiral, starting small and then growing it out. And then I'm adding um, lines that are slightly curved in one direction. Um, and then trying to figure it out. I made it way too symmetrical in one point, like both sides were absolutely the same. So I'm trying to kind of figure out uh, which side should I make smaller, which side should I make um, larger. And that's pretty much trying to to position it in a way that doesn't look um, too much like a beach ball or like a circle. I really wanted to create that shell look and obviously start small and slightly grow it out. So, um, and of course, i following with my finger the spiral just to make sure that it's connecting correctly. So the two colors that I'm going to be using through the whole painting, actually there's going to be three colors, but the most important colors is tallow blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue. And if you add to the tallow blue a little bit of um, verdian green, it becomes this beautiful greenish blue color that just, I don't know, it really calms me down. I love, love this color. And I am going to pretty much do almost the same exact thing um, to all those little shapes on the shell. And I am trying in the beginning right here doing dry on wet, which means a wet brush goes on a dry surface and I am gently filling it in with super, super transparent color. And after that, I'm going in and dropping a little bit more color and having that color disperse and create these beautiful clouds. And I'm um, continuing again with um, some really transparent color, filling in the shape. And if you see, I'm leaving a hairline between each shape. And that's kind of like one of the important things in this painting to leave that area super clean. So you have to be very careful not to touch them because if you do then, the neighboring wet area is going to go into the other area and it's going to take that white line away. So the challenge for this painting pretty much was that leaving that white area clean and untouched. Um, so I'm adding a darker color on the outer outer, outer line. So each, each shape on the outside of that shape um, I'm adding a darker color so it creates the illusion of a dome or something that it's lifted up even though our most shadowy place is actually our white line um, it still creates the illusion of something that it's lifted up because we are leaving a lot of lighter color on the top of those shapes um, so what I'm starting here is I switch my technique and I started with wet um, on wet, which means wet surface. My paper is wet and I'm dropping in the paint. And my preferred technique is dry on wet, but sometimes it depends on what I'm painting. It just works a little bit faster and better to do wet on wet. And in this case, it just seemed to me that it didn't make any sense to do the um, dry on wet and then put the color in when I can almost do the same thing just wet on wet. So it wasn't a huge difference and it was actually much much faster to go wet on wet. Um, you do see how my previous color in the centers, it has a little bit more blue 
but I'll fix that in one point. I'm just gonna go in with a super transparent color and add as much as I need to. But the wet on wet is just really, really fast. So you're dropping your color into the wet surface and then kind of watching to see what happens. Um, and if you don't necessarily like something, you can always like scoop it a little bit with a clean brush and change it. It's not a big problem. So again, the biggest challenge for this painting is keeping the tiny little hairline between its shape clean and leave it alone. But the rest, I am doing absolutely the same thing again and again and again. So it's a really good beginner um, art that you can do and you don't have to do it just in blues, um, blue and green, but you can do it in yellow and orange. Um, you can actually put few shells next to each other because on the end the shell will be a circular shape so just starting with a spiral so you can do a few different shapes or a few different shells and make them different colors so that could be a fun little project but that's a perfect beginner or super easy painting to do. The brush that I'm using, it's a Van Gogh brush. I love that brush so much. I actually ordered a few more different sizes and um, shapes of Van Gogh brushes. I will post links to those. And also I'm using, um, the paint that I'm using is Brum Batcher, which has beautiful colors. And it's a really cute, it could be a travel set. I do have a smaller travel set, but it could be a travel set. And underneath the paint, there is more mixing area that you can use. But um, I love the colors in this set. I use this set quite often. It is a um, student grade um, watercolor paint. It's not super expensive, but it works really well. I like the paint. So um, I'll have that in the description below, all those links for you guys if you want anything. It's going to be easy for you to find them. And um, going back to just the blue color. So I do have two blue, different blues. So one is the tallow blue and the other one is the ultramarine there. So I, from time to time I do pick the ultramarine very very little bit and I put it right in the corners or somewhere that it's barely visible but I am using more of the tallow blue than the ultramarine because the ultramarine seems a little bit too heavy and cold to me for the shell I just wanted to make it a little softer lighter and warmer and that's why I added the green in it and also I start adding a little bit of um, orange, which is, um, let me see, cadmium yellow. So it's a cadmium yellow, but I add a tiny bit of the blue in it, barely. So it has a little bit of a greenish hue. So that orange is kind of like a dirty, dirty orange. And again, Trying to keep those areas alone in between each shape. Um, that was pretty much the most important thing is not getting into the other side. Right the center, I will leave this alone until the very end. 
because it's a small area and it's very important not to mess up that white line. Um, so I'm gonna leave it alone until everything around dries up because if you, let's say, touch um, somewhere when you have a bigger shape and it's a very slight touch, the problem will be uh, much smaller than if you touch absolutely the same way in a very tiny area because you don't have a lot of space to work with. So um, I left that alone until the very, very end. Um, and honestly, you don't have to do every shape in order. You can jump around to give each shape a little more time to absorb the paper to absorb and, and the uh, paint to dry a little bit and then go back to those shapes that are a little bit um, drier but um, If you have control over your hand You don't have any problems. Also, I ordered some um, Medium that you apply to areas that you really want to keep clean and I will make a video about that I am NOT so much into things like this it feels to me that um, in a way that I am cheating I'm sure it's not like that but I like to I guess force myself to keep an area white and work in a way that I can make things happen without adding um, gels and mediums that will um, separate the paint from the paper or keep it clean but we'll see we'll see what happens I'll experiment I'll paint a um, few different paintings with that and see how I feel about it um, but yeah there is my dirty orange and I'm just dropping it in in wet areas and if if you drop it in an area where let's say you forgot to do so and you drop it in and it's not as wet, just bring in a little bit of water and just touch the water around that either orange or blue or whatever it is and reactivate the water slightly and then it's going to give you this beautiful um, clouds. And there it is, I did touch a wet neighbor and the paint is going into my shape so do you see how fast that happened and it took pretty good portion so imagine if the shape was very very little it's going to disappear um i'm going to pretend that this didn't happen and i'm just going to continue painting um because it's one tiny tiny little area and when it dries i'm gonna add a little bit of a darker color right there to separate that section and make it stand out but I am just gonna leave it alone um, and yeah I'm just taking some of the water away and pretty much did not go much and work in that area that the color sipped through the other shape on the top and this is a good thing turning the uh, paper the way it's comfortable to your hand I do that a lot especially when I work in books but even if you work with a bigger area much bigger canvas just work on obviously on a place that either you can be going around your uh, project if you cannot move it too much or if you can move it even better because you want your brush stroke to not be forced you want your hand to be going in a natural direction um, and that just creates better lines, smoother lines so I do turn my canvas a lot around um, doesn't matter if it's a um, still art if it's humans, dogs, whatever it is I turn my canvases around And again, emphasizing on the edges with a darker color to make it more three-dimensional.
with this painting and one of the important things is when you're painting with watercolor is to get a brush that has a good point to it so you can use it either uh, with more pressure to to cover in more area or just use the tip of the brush uh, for finer details so if you notice I did not switch between brushes um, I try to not do that when I'm painting so I choose a brush that I can paint the whole painting um, obviously there are times that I do switch brushes but most of the times I just choose a brush that um, makes more sense to go around and to do the whole work with one brush or majority of the work with one brush and this is not a big brush this is a small brush this is I think I mentioned it's number six um, so it's a it's a small size not really tiny but it's a small size brush much water in that tiny little space so I had to like scoop it out and move it around um, but this is it we are doing the last part and that is the center piece so now I am um, trying to stay inside the lines and put that last little detail in absolutely the same way as I started so the whole shell is one of those um, practice, practice, practice in a way, doing the same exact technique to almost the same shape all through the whole painting. And yeah, it looks like this is it. Um, the colors are there. I probably will start adding a little bit more um, if it's too white or... It, the interest is not there on some of the shapes. I'm just going to add a transparent color and then use water to soften the edges. Um, just to take away some of that white, super, super light white area. I will leave part of it, but if it's too big, maybe I'll take it out. Um, it's pretty much like each one. I'm going to look around and judge it and see where we are but this is it i think we're done and i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to give us thumbs up and i will see you next week same place thanks for watching